The day after the storm, air passengers united in misery. Why did one airline have problems that others didn't? All the Coloradans still without power would make up a city larger than Parker. Colorado's Republican center gets off the fence on the border wall, and he finds himself standing on the other side of where he started. It is just sinking in what a dangerous thing Colorado Senate Democrats did yesterday. And police post a suspect selfie with an invitation to come get his cell phone. Whoops, that's next. It's a rush to clean up Colorado after the blizzard, a cold mess express. Some of our neighbors woke up in their cars this morning, still stranded, still in need of rescue. The airport just reopened each of its runways within the last 30 minutes. So there's all six now back in operation after that last one reopened. The complete runway shutdown at DIA was only the fourth in that airport's history. The time consuming cleanup meant that another 700 flights had to be canceled today. You have to appreciate the airlines that preemptively canceled to keep people from going out there and getting stranded at the airport and taking the risk in the weather. There's that approach and then there's United's approach. United held to most of its flight schedule and then canceled on the day of the blizzard. So tell me if you have ever seen a customer service line at the airport like this one. It snaked all the way around that deck of DIA with United passengers trying to rebook and others just trying to check bags and catch a flight on time. If some of those United passengers look sleepy, it's because they were forced to sleep on the airport floor. They noticed that other airlines out there today did not have the same incredible lines full of incredibly frustrated people. They don't have anybody out here directing people, telling them where to go, what to do. I, I would have rather had them cancel the flights and actually let everybody know that they were canceled. That way at least you can make, you know, other arrangements. United did not directly answer our questions about why they chose to do things differently, only saying that it was not done to maximize profit, but that they were trying to make decisions based on the weather and safety. Planes, trains, and automobiles. The A-Line was back working today, and the slow process on the roads of clearing cars that got stuck took much of today. I-70, I-76, especially I-25 down in Douglas County and Point South. The interstate from Castle Rock down to the Springs didn't reopen until 3 this afternoon. There was a small, largely private procession along I-25 near Loveland today. The family of CSP Corporal Dan Groves did not want all of the attention that often accompanies the procession given to law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty. Corporal Groves was hit and killed while helping a driver yesterday on I-76 near Roggen. The 12-year veteran of CSP was 52 years old. Gross family is asking for privacy. We'll respect that. A friend who worked with the corporal up in Summit County wrote to Next saying that Gross was always smiling and was consistently excellent at his job. XL Energy crews are still out working to restore power. There are about 53,000 customers without electricity tonight. XL says upwards of 400,000 people lost power at least briefly at some point during that storm. Thousands of phones were buzzing in Commerce City today. One of those emergency alerts issued by the government. This one for a road closure. I didn't know that they could blow up everybody's phone for a road closure, and neither did the next viewer who brought it to our attention. I checked, and the government can totally text all of us about a road closure. The alert at 1238 this afternoon told people to stay away from 96th between Tower Road and Highway 2 blizzard cleanup. That alert would not meet the strict criteria that's used for wireless emergency alerts. Those are only for amber alerts, imminent threats, and presidential alerts. But Commerce City used a Homeland Security alert system to target that message to 2,300 phones between 104th and 96th, Tower and Chambers. The police department told me they felt that the situation warranted the disruption. Though you could imagine the literal buzz we would all get if every jurisdiction sent emergency alerts for road closures. Senate Democrats at the state legislature opened their session late today, a day after admitting that they did not call a snow day during the blizzard yesterday when the rest of the Capitol did because of politics. We didn't have time to get into this in any depth yesterday with all of the storm coverage, but I do not want to let this go by without speaking about it clearly. The state Senate's Democratic leadership should be embarrassed that they put public safety at risk during the blizzard to stay open for purely political reasons. Senate President Leroy Garcia admitted it to us here yesterday, talked about how he served as a Marine and how it's about getting things done. 
Mr. President, you are not leading a Marine platoon. You're leading a legislature, and citizens should not have to risk their lives so they can testify about the bills you're rushing into law. Now, I don't expect any Democrat to be angry that fellow Democrats are fast-tracking bills. And I don't think any Republican is going to be upset that fellow Republicans are doing everything they can to stall and obstruct. That is all just Colorado politics. But we are in a sorry state if we cannot agree that dangerous weather shouldn't be used against citizens as a political weapon. One of Governor Jared Polis's promises has the potential to be broken or at least delayed, and not because of the man who made the promise. So he promised a full day kindergarten paid by the state. Just after he took office, his budget included the nearly quarter billion dollar a year cost. This proposal includes a $227 million that provides full funding for kindergarten across the state. Tomorrow, legislators who look at the state's checkbook each day are going to get an update on how much money we have to spend on this. And the top Democrat on that committee, same party as the governor, is starting to pump the promise breaks. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger is back from the Capitol. And Marshall, listen, this was Polis' number one promise. He talked about it first. This was the thing that he wanted. Where's his party on this? They're mixed right now. Full day kindergarten was front and center in his campaign, front and center in his state of the state address, and literally front and center when Polis went to the Joint Budget Committee two months ago pitching his budget himself. It's going to cost the state $227 million to fund full day kindergarten just for one year. That does not take into account later years. Tomorrow, the state's budget committee will get an update on projections on the state's bank account, taking into, taking into account projected property values and the taxes they bring in in the future. As of now, the state would have enough money to pay for full day kindergarten, yeah. but as the joint budget committee chairman, it's a Democrat, to just told me, the state's got a lot of needs. We have uh, a backlog in transportation funding projects that, um, you know, there, there's $200 million in the governor's request for transportation projects. We need a lot more than that. I fully understand the governor has, has made a promise to live on, deliver on free full day kindergarten. What I would hope that we all understand is that a promise is a promise kept, whether it's in the first year or whether it's in the next couple of years. We might need to remix that as part of the Polis promises. As long as Democrats are in charge at the Capitol, Kyle State paid full day kindergarten is going to happen. We'll just find out tomorrow if there's enough money to make that promise kept in year one or not. And we got to remember, I mean, we're tracking his promises because he's running the state, but a lot of people have promised a lot of things. And it's clear that there are certain lawmakers in certain areas that have other interests than just school. As you heard, transportation mm -hmm. could be bigger in, depending where you are. All right. Thank you, Marshall. No matter where you stand on President Trump's national emergency declaration to build the border wall, Republican Senator Cory Gardner understands your position because he has held every single position on it himself. He was against the national emergency until the day that the president declared it. Then Senator Gardner said he was undecided. And today, Senator Gardner voted for it as a dozen other Republican senators voted against the president. President Trump will now be forced to issue his first veto. The most Colorado thing we've seen today are a few, well, quintessentially Colorado reactions to our big storm. Next viewer, Jolia, took this photo of a tree down at her neighbor's house in Westminster, fell on her neighbor's car. Then an hour later, she says, neighbor, move the car, never disturb the tree. And this is a photo of the tracks of a dog named Clayton, Gia's dog, Clayton, who took the quickest potty break in the history of dogs. Porter does that same very thing. In and out. Hey, may I make a recommendation? Something to give you a little insight on how weather closures are determined. A lot of schools and colleges got a second snow day today. We had several local college students emailing in about their campuses being open the day after the blizzard. An article written by Colorado State University details that process that universities can take to determine a snow day. It explains why it's a rare case for a college to cancel classes, talks about who makes the decision keeping in mind that each university has different policies. Next, maybe they can write an article telling me which camera to look at. Nine News meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen has a, a nickname. He's now the scarf guy. So you know what Corey does. He likes to, to go out into the heart of the weather and then just let that freak flag fly. That would be the scarf, of course. You knew what he was doing with that scarf. We knew what he was doing with that scarf. And he tells us, oh, yeah, it's its own device, and it might just need its own social media page. Meteorologist Corey Reppenhagen has been out in it today. Oh, yeah. The scarf 
is not at a full flutter behind him. Horizontal. You know, as I stand out here in this wind, Corey uh, Revenagan is out in Elizabeth as well. He is, <laughs> he is there with his goggles on. Completely white out blizzard. Common sense, of course, tells you to find a nice warm place to hunker down in a storm like this. And then there's Corey Revenhagen who finds the worst place possible. I gotta go pay for our gas. The state wants more people to see a piece of history we showed you here, but it won't be cheap. Police tell a suspected shoplifter, hey dude, you forgot your phone. And a double dose of how not to Colorado especially after a blizzard. That's next. Get your popcorn ready. We have a double feature of That's Not How You Colorado. Now, you know that you can get a ticket if you don't clear the snow off your car windows, or you could hit somebody if that kind of thing is of concern to you. It does not even look like there was an attempt made on this vehicle. And state troopers up in the foothills, West Jeffco and Gilpin County, say, well, the woman didn't do much of a better job on the front window either. They cited her for careless driving and then helped her clean off the car. And how about drivers blowing through intersections with those traffic lights that are tough to see? I think these are those LED lights that don't always heat up properly. That's at Colfax and Calumet. That's not how you Colorado or how you Nebraska or Wyoming or Montana or anywhere. If you cannot see the lights, it's a four way stop. Please, please be careful. <laughs> The storm that created the blizzard conditions is well east of us now. A calmer night in Denver, but gusty winds out on the eastern plains mean that many of the county roads in Elbert County will remain closed through tomorrow morning. A warmer day, but still a far cry from the average of 54. This system tracking into the Midwest creates a blizzard here and severe weather east of Memphis, Cincinnati, and Atlanta. We have a beautiful day coming up tomorrow. The kickoff of a warming trend that will see us into the 40s and 50s for the weekend. Luck of the Irish with us on Sunday, the warmer of the two weekend days, by the way. So Snow diminishing in the high country. There are avalanche warnings out, but all the advisories for travel on the plains diminishing as the evening wears on. With clear skies and light winds, a cold night coming up with good radiational cooling. Partly cloudy, windy early, and then calmer are low 15. Sunshine to start and will climb into the low 40s by about 2 o'clock. Nice day tomorrow. Good looking weekend. A little mountain snow on Monday and isolated showers down here with temperatures soaring into the mid 50s and maybe even 60 degrees by Thursday, Kyle. Kathy, thank you. <coughs> Pardon me. Jeez. Holy cow. I am on the struggle bus today. No rush to clean up at the Colorado Freedom Memorial, not before they took in the beauty of the blizzard. Our friend Rick Crandall over there shared these photos. He said that the blizzard paid its respects with a beautiful display. How much would be too much to spend on one of Colorado's oldest pieces of state history? told you last month about Colorado's three versions of its constitution. There's the big one in Quill Cursive English on display at History Colorado, and then there are two other versions. They're smaller pamphlet sizes, but they're in Spanish and German. They're on display in Pueblo. State legislators are slowly working on a plan to put the constitution on display for the public at the Capitol. Of course, it comes down to cost. If you ever wonder why certain lawmakers sponsor certain bills, listen to the brief biography of Democratic Senator Kerry Donovan. Straight out of college, I worked in the field of archaeology. After archaeology, I went into working for nonprofits. I then was an educator for about seven years, and then I got elected to public office. So you combine all those jobs into one, and what do you get? You get a senator who now wants to display the Constitution in the Capitol. Donovan's bill is just a study, figuring out what it would take and how much it would cost. History, of course, giving people access to it is not cheap. The estimate for security cameras and, and lighting and special temperature control cases between $150,000 and $350,000. Big ups to Milt who got me the water during that story. An accused shoplifter in Lakeside is getting internet famous. Lakeside police posted on Facebook today a message right to a gentleman named Crow Lowry. They write, while shoplifting at the Walmart today, you left your cell phone. Please contact the Lakeside Police Department for your cell phone and your shoplifting charge. Hope to see you soon. 
dude, it's over. Just go in. Just go in. A U.S. postal worker sounds like he has a challenge for the weather. Yesterday was was pretty bad, but but I cannot say I've seen the worst yet. You think on days like yesterday they curse the motto? I bet you they do. That's next. First day you miss your mail due to the weather and you're ready to rub that Postal Service motto in their face. Neither snow nor rain nor heat, you know it. Did you know that's not actually the Postal Service motto? It just kind of caught on popularly after it was literally carved in stone over the entrance to a post office in New York City. But one carrier told us he still tries to live up to that promise. My name is Adam Fung. I work for the United States Postal Service as a letter carrier. I do like my job because you're not just a letter carrier, you're not just delivering the mail, you're part of a community, you get to know your customers. It's a good way for me to be outside a lot. Most of my route is made of walking, so that's exercise for me too, actually. So it's almost like I'm getting paid to exercise too. We do have challenges every day, but we, but we brave through them. Yesterday was a challenge for us. We did our best. The weather, it was very windy. Uh, it was, it was a blizzard. It was, it was a rough day. What I remember most about yesterday is me trying to stay focused, no matter what is going on right now. You know, try to keep the mail safe for our customers. Because during those elements, you don't know what's going to happen, whether whether things get blown away, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. So throughout the day, I was trying to keep that mail safe for my customers, you know, and, and have that mail get to my customers. That's what I was thinking of. That's what I remember from yesterday. It was bad, but we did we did the best we could to get the mail out to to our customers. Keep staying safe. That's probably the only only thing we have to focus on every single day is to stay safe. Because you know, if we don't stay safe, we can't get our jobs completed. There were some hiccups in the mail delivery yesterday. Understandable. There were stations without power. There's some delayed deliveries and just some straight up missed mail when roads had to be closed. So it's not the snow that I'm thinking about at this point. I'm thinking about the astonishing ways in which people came together yesterday to fight it. We'll talk about that, and I will share one of the spiciest pieces of feedback we've received in quite a while. Next. The bomb cyclone of 2019 has moved out of town, but there is something I just can't stop thinking about. It is all of the people, all those known to us and those unknown to us, who made a bad situation better for our neighbors. The Red Cross workers and volunteers, the power crew line workers, the National Guard, the law enforcement, the CDOT crews, the bus drivers turned shuttles for the stranded. Even the Air Force veteran who spent his day to day driving up and down I-25 just looking to help stuck drivers. You know, it makes you, it makes you proud to live somewhere where so many people help out, so many that you literally cannot count them all. We finish, as always, with your feedback. A viewer named Bill Yeoman writes in, says, Kyle, why display and promote a plastic water bottle? Uh, Bill, it was because I was uh, coughing, uh, almost choking, and, and milk couldn't exactly just run a water hose out and just spray me with it. So we thought a plastic water bottle might be all right. There's an anonymous viewer who emailed in today saying, quote, I demand that you fire Kyle Clark. He's ruining your station. If you haven't noticed, he's so one-sided on every topic he reports on. It's not how a news anchor should be reporting the news. This anonymous emailer continues, I'm sorry to say I have watched Nine News all my 45 years and will no longer be watching. News out. Well, I tell you what, I didn't love that email, but I do kind of like that close. News out. <laughs>